All right, this is my John Deere G100 um, uh, with the transaxle problems. After running for 15 to 20 minutes, uh, there's absolutely no power and certainly no pulling power uphill for uh, the transmission. So uh, after uh, I've tried unsuccessfully to change the oil to the 5W50 uh, without without uh, any improvement, I've decided to uh, start a complete rebuild of the pump and motor housing of the transmission. So first step, jack the trailer, the tractor up. Uh, so with some sort of support system and remove the rear wheels. This is the transaxle with the uh, wheels removed and I've supported the uh, transaxle uh, with a uh, automotive jack and a piece of plywood to support it while we unbolted it and removed the three uh, connecting rods which are the brake, freewheel, gear and the throttle. Alright, here's the uh, transaxle uh, unbolted from the, the tractor and ready to go to the uh, workbench to, for disassembly. Alright, this is the uh, Tough Torque K66 transmission that is uh, pulled out and in the upright position I will need to um, turn it over upside down to, to do the rebuild but this gives you an idea of what we're into. Uh, I left the axles intact Okay, so uh, this is the inverted transaxle, which I will now uh, remove the bottom of the case. Uh, it's always clever to see how guys suspend their transaxles. I'm using two saw horses and a couple pieces of uh, two by four. So uh, we're ready to remove the uh, several bolts that hold the bottom of the case on, and we'll look to see what we have underneath there. Okay, starting to disassemble here, and I'm going to uh, remove the top spring as well as the filter uh, which exposes the uh, there's a gasket on the bottom there too so the filter has two gaskets and the spring in the middle we'll set those aside we won't need them we're going to replace that next we're going to remove the center gear and the orientation is uh, the slotted uh, end of the uh, pinion goes there uh, this is round on the top, so I'm going to assume that doesn't matter. Uh, wiggle that out of there. And move it over to the table. Uh, next I'm going to remove the, uh, the brake shoes, which are uh, these pieces here. And According to the wear, you can see which uh, orientation they'll go back in as well. So that's simple. Next, the next time I do want to demonstrate that the, the gears, uh, spider gears, do seem to be in good shape, and what more so, looking down into the bottom of the case, actually the top of the case, uh, with my magnet, I'm getting no shards or. or uh, ferrous material filings so I feel pretty good that the uh, the gears of the transmission are, are uh, not the problem and simply that it's the pump and motor uh, that's given us fits. Uh, to further um, bolster my opinion that it's not gear related the magnet is almost completely clear it has some sparkles of metal on it uh, we'll replace that either way and the filter is uh, other than the little um, sealant on there is uh, relatively clean we can see through it next we're going to uh, remove the center case from the transaxle that's held on by three uh, 14 millimeter bolts here which I will now uh, hopefully Alright, I got these broke loose. Um, tough torque must torque these down. I think 47 pounds felt like 147. I think I pulled a bicep muscle trying to trying to break those free. Um, and I needed my helper here with the camera to hold the transaxle while I use the breaker bar to, to open that up. So 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and loosen these up and remove the bolts. Okay, I removed the three bolts and uh, I'm getting ready to uh, remove the center case. Removed the brake shoes earlier. Doesn't appear there's anything else uh, hanging it up. So I'm going to easily and slowly maybe okay remove the bolts and we're having a double of a time getting this center case out um, it seems to be free but it's hung up on something that we're missing and I'm suspecting it might be the center uh, the center pump charge unit here I just I'm just a hundred percent honored sure what what the purpose of this is check back in a minute. As you can see the new char, uh, center case does not come with the uh, charge pump kit so I want to attempt to remove that uh, in reverse order and see if that doesn't help some. It's got a cap with the uh, with a pin there at about the two o'clock position. Flip that over and you have a cam with a starred gear. I don't know if that's on a, a timed or not, but I'm going to invert that, place it in there. Not much tolerance. And that comes off with a, okay, there's a pin that's holding the entire thing on. Okay, that makes sense. So I removed the center gear. Uh, on top, as you can see, there are two slots which fit down over the top of the pin. And no matter what amount of wiggling we're going to do with screwdrivers, are we going to be able to remove that? So um, we're going to push this back down on. Hopefully, remove that pin. Place it back in the uh, slot on that gear, and attempt to remove the center case one more time. Okay, when all else fails, refer to the schematic, um, which clearly shows a pin somewhere. Found it, but it appears that's what's holding the center case to the uh, to the transaction case. All right, now that we've removed that pin, oh wow, this thing is just coming out like lickety split. So uh, when all else fails, refer to the schematic. Um, I know this is spring-loaded, and I'm going to try my best to carry it off in one piece over to the workbench. All right, finally, after uh, getting that center case out, it's time to now remove the, uh, the pump. Uh, and there's a technique to this so the pistons don't fall out of the cylinder here and you watch to see if I can't screw that up okay that goes over here to the parts table as well so that will be our pump and we'll look at that a little closer shortly all right, as you can see, uh, very very happy with the amount of metal or the non-amount of metal in the bottom top of the case. Uh, feeling good about that. And I'm going to assume that the problem is with the uh, the pump and motor kit. Let's go over here and I'll show you what damage we did to the center case. Trying to pry it up without removing the pin, which is on the spindle. Uh, I should say the main shaft. It's number 35 in the schematic and it simply holds um, the uh, center case down uh, or I should say up against the uh, bottom or top of the case um, with that pin and since it is under uh, spring loaded by the uh, but we did damage the uh, internal uh, section but that's okay because we're going to replace it and as well, uh, that is inherent, obviously, to the K66 because the three videos I watched of the K46 being disassembled, uh, that was never a part. So uh, keep that in mind. 
All right, uh, it's time to disassemble the um, the motor part of the uh, configuration. Where I do know that this uh, washer here is extremely important, as well as a little pin that that uh, is um, located right there, and actually is the pin that. Uh, allows the uh, free wheel to engage so you can push the mower without uh, uh, without um, allows you to push or tow the mower. So at this time I'd like to look at the uh, face of, of both this which very uh, looks actually very nice and uh, machined. Of course I'm a mailman not a mechanic so I uh, can't verify or deny the the uh, machine quality of that as well as the bottom uh, to, to this West Virginia hick doesn't uh, doesn't appear bad at all uh, there's the pin that we were just talking about which uh, falls out and is easy to lose and is very slippery when wet uh, let's go back over to the um, uh, transaxle case and we want to make sure that the free wheel uh, which I didn't know at the time this is what engages the free wheel and pushes that pin against the uh, the motor uh, allowing it to spin that should be uh, perpendicular to the to the axle as much as possible instead of uh, in the on, on position Again, leaving that washer intact, I'm going to remove the the motor assembly. Uh, this will all reuse here. And um, once again, the face uh, appears uh, smooth, and and I cannot tell that there's any play at all in the cylinders, these pistons, uh, but. Uh, Obviously, even a couple hundredths of a, an inch will cause the hot oil to bypass that and uh, result in a loss of power. So I'm going to assume and hope that by replacing the, the pump and the motor uh, that we will uh, be able to have full power again to the K66 transaxle. Here we have the two cylinders um, and piston assemblies. One is the pump, one is the motor. And here are the brand new ones. On the K46, one is larger. I believe the uh, pump is larger than the motor or vice versa. On the, on the K66, however, um, the pump and the motor are identical part number, number 24 and um, appear identical not only in, um, in looks but in uh, circumference as well in diameter so uh, and it appears the the spline sh uh, sh shaft in the center um, is identical for both of them so uh, contrary to the K46 and prob possibly because it's a stronger transmission uh, this will be a, uh, a larger pump and motor assembly so we'll go ahead and start with the reassembly and uh, we'll get back to you soon. Once again, um, I had to remove the two spring pins from this assembly and uh, transferring them over to the to the new center case. Uh, it's simply a spring pin and uh, I'm going to tap those in. Until it bottoms out, we're good to go. Other than the, um, the small pin for the freewheel mechanism and the washer on the back of the motor assembly, this is good to go.